So one of my best pieces of advice is to show teacher presence. I feel like my experience as a student taking online courses, I've seen great course design, I've seen great course activities, a lot of engagement. Um, the teacher is always there. If you have a question, they'll email you back very quickly. But a lot of times I don't feel like I'm learning directly from the teacher. I want more teacher interaction with me. I want more guidance. I want more challenges from them, kind of on top of me to push me. The most important thing that I have heard from students that they're, you know, they need in an online course is instructor presence. Over and over and over, I um, hear from students the students who are happiest are the ones whose instructors are very present and very warm, you know, and have a sense of humor. Like those are the things that keep students engaged in their online courses and, you know, take the courses again with those same instructors. Um, prompt responses to emails or, or any kind of course messaging, very important. Um, I get lots of calls. I've sent emails to this professor. They never get back to me. So, um, however, the ones that do, um, really respond quickly and have their students, you know, best interest in mind like that um, are the favorites. I set up the expectations ahead of time. I tell them how often I'm going to sign on. However, I do sign on more than I tell them because I know what will happen. The one day that I don't do it, uh, somebody will be looking for me and they'll say, you said you were online every day, which I am, but I don't say that. Um, I tell them how many hours a week that they should be online. Um, and I frequent, frequently communicate with them. I put a lot of announcements in classes as well. I try to change it every other day so there's something new there because I don't want it to get stale. Try to make a connection with, with each, each and every one of the students. They want that connection. They're signing up for an all, a course in general at a college for that expert advice. And they want to make, most of them, I think, want to make a connection with that expert faculty member. They don't want to just read the book and talk with their classmates. Um, sometimes it feels like a, a book club like that, when I'm just reading the book, talking with them, uh, completing a, an essay. Um, yeah, they want to feel like by the end of the semester they really got to know their teacher and they made a connection. When I was a student, I wanted feedback. So, it, meaning, um, you know, it, it's really easy as a student in an online course to not feel like you're uh, important or valued, to feel like you're kind of a number. Um, if that instructor is not providing a lot of feedback to you, one-on-one, -on -one, not just the posting to the entire class. So it always was great for me when I had an instructor who would give me, you know, I didn't mind a lot of um, red pen, so to speak, on my papers. I wanted to see those kind of, that, that kind of feedback. Uh, so having that interaction, one of the things that's been the most beneficial for me as a more advanced student as well, um, has been video chatting. So yeah, Skype with me. Let me see who you are. Um, because students don't feel sometimes that, um, that the person on the other end is real, right? It's that I don't, I don't know who they are, I don't know them. And so being able to visually see them is really important. So offer times where I can sit down and talk with you. And it, it, it may not be exactly like face to face, but it's gonna, it's gonna kind of feel that way, especially once you do it a few times. So having, having that kind of interaction is really important to me. Um, I don't wanna ever be in a course where I go from beginning to end and I never, know, I never had any interaction with the instructor. And I know that there's some that that, that can happen, right? I wanna, I wanna hear from them, I wanna see them, and I want them to be giving me real feedback, not just nice job. So it needs to be a little bit more than that kind of you know, quick little feedback. I want something in depth that says, you did really great with this, but maybe you could do a little bit better here, right? Um, so, so detailed, not, not just super quick and easy. We have the faculty examine. What is going to be their instructor-student connection? How are they going to interact? How are they going to give feedback? Are they going to use the phone, virtual office hours? Are they going to be, have a presence in the discussion forum? So that's how we talk about the instructor presence and connection with the students. We have to have the student-to-student -student connection. And so are they using discussion forums, the chat room, group projects, peer review? And then what, and this is really critical, the student to content interaction. 
because the whole point of this is to take advantage of the web and we want to promote active learning. So it's not just taking quizzes and tests, it's using the environment to, to create, to produce. I think that the idea of conditional release of material is excellent so that students can move at their own speed within a module. Um, and so you can, you can say, well, if you haven't taken the quiz on this, you can't get into the discussion. That would be very useful. I do send plenty of um, email, course mail reminders that, in fact, I sent one today that um, module three will be closing Sunday evening. Make sure you've taken the quizzes, participated in the discussion, submitted the assignments. What does that mean in terms of the practical ways in which you manage the class? Log in frequently, communicate with students frequently, provide timely feedback. Your presence in the class is demonstrated by what you post, whether it's um, a lecture or response to discussion forums, and discussion forums in particular. Um, you want them to be student-centered, but you can't be AWOL because students will notice that right away and it will increase their anxiety. So uh, you don't necessarily have to jump in and give an answer, but you will want to what I call stir the pot, which is keep the discussion going by prodding with follow-up questions, by reinforcing quality posts, uh, and redirecting students where necessary. So these are some of the ways in which you demonstrate your presence. The other way in which you demonstrate teacher presence is by the content that you create for students to um, engage with. So if that content is robust uh, in terms of video or audio or screencasts, um, all of these things uh, demonstrate to students that you are in fact teaching the class or teaching the class alongside them. If I don't have an answer for somebody, I'll at least acknowledge that they, they uh, sent me a course mail and say, I don't know or I'll get back to you, but just acknowledge them because otherwise you lose that connection and they feel very isolated. I've heard more than once that uh, faculty feel a responsibility to be active participants in the discussion threads. And my sense of, of best practice for them would be to focus their attention to providing feedback to the students who are facilitating the discussion rather than to, for them to take the responsibility to facilitate the discussion themselves. So a best practice for a faculty member would be to monitor the interaction and then provide feedback to the discussion leaders on how to get the conversation back on track or how to uh, present information that corrects a, some misinformation that might have been presented, uh, how to probe for additional information from the participants and so forth. So if the students are asking the questions and then they're taking responsibility for teaching that topic and leading that discussion, the instructor's role then becomes one of making sure they do a good job and that the conversations that they are facilitating are providing accurate information about the content that's being discussed. I give them feedback, discussion feedback, pretty much the day the discussion is over. The written assignments, I tell them I'm a module behind because there's an awful lot of work to grade all of these assignments, and they know that. And they have so many grades in this class, unlike probably a classroom class. They know how they're doing. The grades are connected to the grade book. They can always see um, how they're doing. We have heard from students, from our research, we know the students really value the instructor immediacy of feedback, immediacy of responses. Um, I can give an example as a student myself in the online environment and receiving an email from my professor in response to my email and all he said was thank you, meaning he received my email. I know He's going to take a look at it and respond to me, but I know there's a person at the other end there, and that's important. So my biggest point and what we stress on campus is understanding the student experience. That is critical, to know what the student is going through and feeling in the online environment. And when you do, and, and we have several examples and projects going on now where that's what we're testing and measuring. Once you understand the student experience, you will see how you will be able to hold them and hook them in to the online classroom. 
And every class is unique, whether it's a classroom class or, or an online class. Um, some classes I found I have students who have uh, poor English skills. Um, right now I have a class with um, the opposite, very, very high functioning uh, adults. Uh, I think some of them have bachelor's degrees already and everything is, seems to be at a higher level this time. So kind of adapt um, to, to, the, to the students really. You know, try, try, to, try to push them, and then if you have higher performing students, try to challenge them, you know, even more so. In terms of what's impacted me, and I think what's maybe helped me grow, both as an instructional designer, but also as an instructor, is developing a true sense of student empathy. Now, much of that has come from being an online instructor myself and working with students you gain the perspective of what's not working for the student when they are bombarding you with emails and questions. Maybe you aren't clear on a particular assignment. Maybe you aren't giving effective feedback. Those kinds of things help you improve as an instructor, but they're also things you can isolate on as an instructional designer when you're working with a faculty member or looking at her course, thinking through these issues from the perspective of the learner. I also have um, rules in terms of netiquette as well, that I, I don't want anybody using all capital letters because that's equivalent to screaming at somebody. I also um, don't want anybody to criticize somebody else for their opinion if it's different from theirs. And I've really never had a problem with that. Everybody seems to be very respectful of other people even if they don't agree. So that's really not, not a problem. Don't take the students too personally um, because everybody reads tone and two things, communications, that isn't necessarily there. Um, take it easy. You're not going to get it right the first time. Um, there's always room for improvement. As we know, online learning does have a high attrition rate. So if by the end of the first week I don't uh, see them, I send them a letter telling them, a nice letter, telling them, you know, the semester began last week. Um, if you want to be successful, I think it's time that you began the course and this is what you need to do. And um, that sometimes works, gets people on board, sometimes not. So then we go to the week two letter, which gets a little stronger. Make up your mind, do you want to do this? If so, now is the time. And there's even a week three letter. And week three letter ends with, there will be no more letters, because enough is enough. Actually, there is another letter. There's then that mid-semester letter saying, the drop date, the withdrawal date is such and such, so I think that you better uh, take advantage of that, because if not, you're going to get an F. I would give the advice from one of the best online faculty members that I had during my, my time as a student would be um, that person was all over us a little bit to start with. So for example, in the discussion posts, we had to post a discussion. <clears throat> we had to do research. We had to reference the, the readings and our own perspective. So we wrote kind of like a mini essay as our discussion post. Um, we thought it was good but the teacher was jumped on top of us, pushing us to do harder, to dig deeper, to do more research, to think harder about what we were putting out there. So um, even though it might have been great, she was pushing us to be a little greater. And it, it wasn't throughout the whole course, it was more at the beginning, and it did fade a little bit towards the end, so she was taking the reins off as we became familiar and more comfortable with what she wanted. I have my modules begin on Mondays, and they usually last about two weeks and they end on Sunday evenings. And that accommodates a lot of the students who are uh, working during the week and then catch up on weekends. But I do close modules, and when they close, they close. But then I have an eNotes archive where I put the eNotes there because that's really the only thing they, want, they may want to refer to uh, in the future. I am an advocate of, of deadlines, and I do have deadlines, but I do have some flexibility in my deadlines. Um, I do tell them there's no snow, snow days in an online course, that life goes on, doesn't matter what's happening outside. But 
when we had Hurricane Sandy and we didn't have power for an entire week, obviously we had lots of flexibility then. Uh, so I understand, you know, things happen. I also um, grant amnesty at the end, which I don't, I don't you know, advertise this. At the end, um, I will let students make up about, well, maximum of three assignments they may have missed, which is, is pretty generous. And um, of course, they, they will have a lower grade, but, but still, a lower grade is better than a zero. So I do grant amnesty because I, I, I understand life happens and, and sometimes, um, you know, they have wonderful intentions and something, something happens. If they're really far, up, far off, I would say perhaps this isn't, the online venue is not, not for you, that maybe you should withdraw. If it's just something that, um, something came up and put them behind and their history was fine up, up until that point, then I would say, you know, we, we could work this out. That's not a problem. But usually, once you get behind, it's very hard to catch up because I don't allow any makeup work or tests, be, uh, especially n tests, because it's not like you have to be in a classroom at 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning to take the test. The, the test or the quiz is available for a whole week. So hopefully you can find some time within that week to take the test. So why do I need to give you a makeup? It doesn't make any sense. And as I said, I am generous at the end in terms of providing amnesty. Uh, it's not meant for somebody who's done nothing for 10 weeks to all of a sudden say, oh, I'm going to devote the weekend to the course. It's not for that. It's for the person who kind of slipped every now and then. Um, and I do drop some grades. So. Only if you're really behind would I, you know, advise you to withdraw. You're accustomed to a paradigm where you come to class once a week and you spend two or three or more hours in the classroom situation and you might spend some time afterward grading papers and preparing for the next class. Online teaching will be totally different. So scrap that whole timing, uh, concept you have in your mind and consider this. An online class is essentially 24-7. That's the beauty of it. Students can have the flexibility of doing their coursework and their studying whenever they are able to really focus, whether that's in the middle of the night or on a Sunday morning. That being the case, if you stay out of the class for too long a period of time, when you log back in again, you might be a little bit overwhelmed with how much material is there. So my advice to newbie online faculty are make time to log into your class every day if possible. Doesn't mean that you need to be in there several hours every day, but if you log in every day, uh, you can address the new posts and the discussions and the new assignments in a, a more manageable way than if you stay out for two or three days. Uh, you'll find that it's just uh, overwhelming. So pace yourself. So managing the workload of an online course um, can be uh, a little uh, tricky for the, new, for the new instructor. And my advice is to um, carve out a half an hour in the morning and a half an hour at night every day for your online course. You may or may not use all that time, uh, but that's what I do. I have a very specific sort of half hour in my morning before I go to work where I check in on my online course and uh, usually the order of priority is um, course messages, then uh, some discussion, uh, discussion threads uh, that ask them questions, uh, that are there for them to ask, ask me questions, and uh, then grading. That's usually how I go into my, uh, uh, how I uh, tend to my course and the order in which I do it. Um, so my advice is, uh, yeah, to have a regular, uh, re um, a regular hour in which you uh, you look at your online course uh, every day, um, and it doesn't have to be a full hour, and you can break up that hour. And um, you know what I love about teaching online is that at 11:30 at night I can go back to my I, I can uh, you know go into my course and I can teach, 
and teaching is providing feedback, teaching is grading papers. Um, and I really like that <laughs> about online teaching. So I think it is a little hard to manage that in an online format, depending especially on how many students you have in the class. I know a lot of them are 20 to 25 students, but the larger the class size, the more, the harder it is to become intimate with each student. Um, I think feedback is a key thing. One of the things we found out in some of our surveys talking with students is they want, or even research studies, is that they want intimate feedback. They don't want just a good job, bad job. They want details, they want almost like proof that you as a faculty member read their essay, thought about their essay, and give them some constructive feedback about it. Probably the biggest challenge as an online instructor is allocating the time out of your life. And I think it's a great life lesson to learn personally. So it's, again, you can be more empathetic with your own faculty because you too have suffered and toiled throughout a semester. Uh, many times faculty will say, I didn't realize there'd be that much work having to respond individually to every student. It's true, but it's also true that you realize you've really made a commitment to those students and those students have an expectation that you're there for them. Now, their expectation may be that you're there 24-7. Your expectation may be, I'm there from 10 to 8. But negotiating what that means is part of the experience that you do between you and your students. So from my perspective, I think probably the, the biggest takeaway is Teaching is a commitment. Teaching is a huge commitment in terms of time, energy, and enthusiasm. And to be able to do that semester after semester, year after year, we should really stand up and applaud every faculty member that we know because it's a huge commitment. And the fact that they do that year after year after year earns our respect.